to give you some ideas about the uh, tools that I use, uh, I mean, to some extent I use Vim for a lot of this and I do command line stuff, um, but actually uh, for Rust, uh, I've done most of the uh, stuff for this course using uh, an IDE. Uh, and the one that I use is Sea Lion. Uh, it's by JetBrains. They're the people who make IntelliJ IDE. Uh, you may have used it if you've done Android development because it's now the default one. Uh, and basically what I want to point out is although this is a paid software uh, product, uh, there is a free license for students and teachers. You just have to verify using your uWaterloo email. Uh, and so if you wish, uh, as a student registered in the course and registered at the university, you should have no trouble uh, you should have no trouble getting that. Uh, if you are uh, a recent graduate and you're no longer a student license holder, you can, of course, get a, uh, get a uh, discount based on that. Uh, in any case, yeah, Sea Lion is, uh, well, it's like IntelliJ, like I said, if you used IntelliJ, but it is an IDE and it has all the you know, niceties that you would normally expect. Uh, it has you know, Project Explorer. You can do uh, one-click running from here, and it will uh, translate for you into the correct command with bin, cargo, run, all that kind of stuff. Uh, as you might also have seen, uh, I'm doing this uh, on my Mac laptop, uh, and uh, I installed Rust using the Homebrew package manager. You could install it a different way if you wished, uh, but uh, Homebrew worked just fine. Uh, you could do brew install Rust and then um, Rust up to get it up to date. Uh, and that's really all it takes to get the job done. You can see there's lots of uh, niceties that you might be used to in your uh, in your IDE. If I want to rename this uh, this variable, uh, we'll, we'll call it uh, R, R0, or R, yep, and it does it for you. Uh, you can also see it gives little hints as to types, uh, in hints as to parameter names, uh, and all those little things that you would get uh, in, in an IDE that you wouldn't get in something like... Uh, something like Vim. Uh, however, uh, it's also got a couple of other neat features uh, that will come up. Uh, one, of course, is the ability to debug the program and set breakpoints and everything all conveniently in here. Uh, and also the ability to profile it where you can ask the, uh, ask the tools to do some analysis on where the time is going. Profiling is a subject we'll talk about and it's something I'll refer to only 8 million times uh, leading up to that module in the course, uh, but you may find that to be useful. Uh, you will have also seen, uh, I gave a suggestion in the uh, GitLab setup video, if you haven't seen that, about where to go to look up some stuff about Git. Uh, you can also use the IDE's built-in stuff to deal with Git, so commit and push and pull and that sort of thing. Uh, is at your option here, so you could uh, really manage a lot of it all in one. The only thing that I caution you, and I, I'll say this uh, again just for emphasis, because it was also in the uh, GitLab video, uh, is that you can test locally, you can run locally, but you've got to also verify that everything works as expected on the ECE uh, provided servers, the ECE Ubuntu and ECE Tesla machines, because those are the ones that the TAs will use to test it on, uh, and they can't test using your laptop. That's not going to work, uh, so you have to make sure that, you know, even though you're sure that it works just fine on your own laptop and it runs no problem, please check and be sure that it runs on the ECE servers so that you don't get an unexpected surprise when it comes to your mark on any particular assignment.